Section 41 of Gatsby. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Gatsby by Ernest Vincent Wright. Chapter 41. Christmas, gay and happy in Gatsby's mansion, was soon far, far back. A robin or two was hopping about on his honor's lawn, looking for a squirming lunch. Lady was taking short walks with Nancy, Kathleen having to go back to work in our big hospital. Lilac, Syringa, Narcissus, Tulips, Hyacinths burst out in a riot of bloom, and a bright warm sun brought joy to all. And so this history found his honor on his porch with his post, as a young lad coming up said, Good morning, sir. I'm soliciting funds for a big stadium for Branton Hills, which will furnish an opportunity for football, polo, Whoa, said Gatsby, putting down his post and looking critically at his young visitor. You look a bit familiar, boy. Oh, ho, it, if it isn't Kid Banks. Oh, pardon. Alan Banks, son of Councilman Banks. You young folks grow up so fast, I don't know half of you. Now what about this soliciting? Who is back of you? Branton Hills Organization of Youth, Part 2, sir. Branton Hills Org? <laughs> Upon my word, who is starting this group? Mary, coming out from his honest parlor, said, Oh, I forgot to notify you of this. Norman has got about fifty kids from grammar school boys and girls, anxious to follow in your organization's footprints. Was Gatsby happy? Did Gatsby thrill? Did that long-past happy day float in glowing colors through his mind? It did. And now that old, hard-working bunch of kids, grown up, now with kids of its own, that loyal bunch of young sprouts was taking root, was born again. Oh, how youth crawls up on you. How a tiny girl almost instantly shoots up into a tall, charming young woman. How a top-spinning, ball-tossing, racing, shouting boy looms up into a manly young chap in military school uniform. Gatsby was happy. For wasn't this a tonic of his spinal column? So his honor said, Alan, I think Branton Hills will officially aid this stadium plan. I'll put it up to council. But Alan Banks, not Kid Banks now, was just so old to know a thing or two about council bills, and out as a solicitor, naturally sought a good showing on donations one. So said, A council donation will fit in grand, sir, but how about grouchy old Bill Simp? Trot along, Alan. But how about this stadium? I doubt old Bill trot along, Alan. What Mary had said was a fact. Norman Antor had not only fought a military war, Norman Antor also fought an inward war, a war which fought him with gallon jugs, small filials, spoons, mixing apparatus, and a stumbling, mumbling stupor. Norman had fought with about two million lads in that military war, but now, with no aid but a strain of good blood, starting way back of his carousing dad, but, as such traits may, skipping a notch or two, and implanting in this young lad just a grain of its old nobility of mind, was fighting again, and just as any solitary young chap amongst those two million, loyally did his part, just so was this tiny grain now doing its part, fighting valiantly in his brain. It was giving him torturing thoughts in army night camps, of a darling, loving young girl, part of his own family, growing up in a pool of liquor, thoughts and night camps of Branton Hills patrol wagon trips to jail, and darn that thought of Virginia, Virginia drunk by his own hand. Ugh, why not chop that stinking hand off? And on coming back to Branton Hills, watching that darling Mary in Salvation Army uniform, tramping, talking, praying for just such low-down liquor hounds as, oh, it was an awful fight. A long, brain-racking onslaught against a villain shut in by walls of iron. But though Norman Antor's night camp fights with Norman Antor had put a big kick in his wish to lay off that stuff, just a final blow, just an awful brain-crashing blast was still missing, so that that big right hand might point skyward to clinch that vow, and that blast was waiting for Norman. To anybody standing around, it wasn't much of a blast, but it was. It was a mighty concussion of TNT coming as Mary, young, loving, praying Mary, said as his arm unwound from around that frail form, 
Why, a Norman not drunk. God, what flashing, shooting, sizzling sparks shot through his brain, up, out, in, all kinds of ways. What crashing bombs. And that first calm night at old Lady Flanagan's porch, that moonlit night of bliss, with soft cuddling, snuggling, laughing, crying, darling Mary. I say, Norman was shouting, inwardly, that night of bliss was a night of bliss, and don't anybody try to say that it wasn't. For it was a night on which a young man's soul was back, back in its own mind, now full of God's incomparably grand purity. Lady Gatsby was visiting Nina, sitting in that big front parlor. Virginia sitting calmly rocking, and, hmm, that was about all Virginia ought to do just now. A young high school girl coming in said, Good morning. I'm soliciting funds for a stadium for... Marion? sang out Virginia. What's all this? You soliciting? Why not? said Marion brightly. Norman Anter's organization of youth, part two, is soli. Norman Anter's what? And Virginia was all agog in an instant, as Marion Hopkins told all about it, and with childish flippancy forgot all about soliciting, saying, I was told that Harold is giving flying instructions. Do you want to fly? My, I do. I did, said Virginia softly. But not now and Mary was a bit too young to know why Lady Gatsby was smiling at Nina. As Nancy found out about this, on Lady Gatsby's coming back to lunch, that old Branton Hills matron, as Gatsby found a lot of fun calling his baby girl, nowadays said giggling, No, Virginia, you'll stay on solid ground. End of section 41told of happy hours in this long bright month pastor brown announcing a hymn said this is a charming hymn our choir always sings it without company but today i want all you good folks to join in just pour forth your joy and sing it good and strongly that hymn had six stanzas and gatsby noting an actually grand bass singing just back of him thought of turning around from curiosity and as that fifth stanza was starting said to lady gatsby do you know who that is singing that grand bass part lady gatsby didn't but lady gatsby was a woman and from noah's ark to branton hills first church woman as a branch of mankind was curious so a slow casual turning brought a dig in his honor's ribs it's norman antor pastor brown standing at that big church door as folks filing out would stop for a word or two said to gatsby young antor is invariably in church nowadays i may add to my choir and i'm thinking of putting him in it i'm so glad to find out about the boy winning his fight i always thought norman would turn out all right pastor brown was right and two branton hills girls a salvation army lady and a tiny tot of six had won crowns of glory from throwing rays of light into two badly stagnant minds end of chapter forty two recording by john brandon section forty three of gatsby this is a librivox recording all LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John Brandon. Gatsby by Ernest Vincent Wright. Chapter 43. Thirty six months. That's not so long a run in daily affairs. And this Branton Hills history finds Thanksgiving Day dawning. In Branton Hills locality, it is not customarily what you would call a cold day. Many a Thanksgiving has had 
warm balmy air and without snow though also without all that vast army of tiny chirping singing buzzing things on lawn or branch but contrast has its own valuation for through it common sights vanishing annually show up with a happy joy upon coming back ah that first faint colouring of grass in spring that baby bud on shrub or plant slyly asking our loving south wind if it's all right to pop out now that sprouting of big brown limbs of oak and birch that first blush of spring in orchards that first furry fuzzy cuddly spray of pussy willows spring and fall two big points in your trip along your pathway fall with its rubbish from months of labor corn stalks brown dry grass old twigs lying around wilting plants bright colorings blazing in distant woodlands chill winds crawling in through windows at night and spring pick up paint up wash up spring so as i said branton hills got around to thanksgiving day that day on which as many of a family as possibly can sit around a common board coming from afar or from only a door or two away gatsby's dining-room was not big it had always sat but six in his family but on this thanksgiving day hmm wait now mm -hmm. that's it just run that pair of sliding doors back put that parlor lamp upstairs and that piano why not roll it out into my front hall i know it'll look odd but you can't go through a thanksgiving soup to nuts standing up gotta jam in chairs any old way but who is all this mob that'll turn his honor's dining-room into a thirty-foot hall i look around as our happy laughing singing clapping group sits down to gatsby's thanksgiving party i find two posts of honor my gracious so far apart his honor with carving tools filling dish dish and dish at a boy at a girl pass up your chow dish this bird has but two drumsticks but six of his cousins wait out in our cook shop lots of grub what's that julius a bit of dark want any gravy at post two sits ma again in that good old buxom condition so familiar to all branton hills right this way folks for potato squash onions carrots and turnip what a happy bunch following around from gatsby sit bill lucy and addison but whoa who's this addison oh pardon i forgot all about it lucy's baby and his first thanksgiving hi you mustn't crab raisins naughty naughty on lucy's right sit mary julius and norman following along i find nancy frank and baby lillian caitlin john lady standish priscilla and hubby arthur rankin nina adams oh a thousand pardons nina simpkins and old bill say you wouldn't know bill bright happy laughing singing and tapping a cup with his spoon spick span suit and that now famous broadway carnation hello bill you old sport glad to find you looking so happy what two wanks at that bird why bill on bill's right sits pastor brown old dr wilkins harold virginia and patricia oh pardon again patricia virginia's baby just six months old today and valiantly trying to swallow a half-pound candy cow following around i find old tom young sarah and paul no i don't find a high chair by sarah but sarah sits just rocking 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 nowadays following on again is old tom donaldson clancy dowd and old lady flanagan with this dumb thing i calls husband and lastly 
marion and old pat ryan from our railway station's trunk room so it was just laugh talk stuff and oh hum folks can't stay all night you know so finally groups and pairs drifting out all had happy words for his honor and lady gatsby and his honor a word or two for you know gatsby can talk so it was good night nina good luck old bill oh say bill will that cigar blow up good night virginia and ta ta patricia and virginia you mind your ma and stay down on solid ground aha clancy you old motor pump fan no that's wrong animal drawn pump good night pastor brown so glad you put norman in your choir and now old tom and sarah tom you look as young as on that day on which you brought sarah just a tiny squalling fist waving bunch to this porch to ask about adoption and i know sarah has always had a kind loving dad paul you young sprout as you turn into a daddy soon now you'll find that on marrying a man and woman start actually living it's miraculous paul that's just what it is and so it was pairs and groups shaking hands and laughing until finally a big buxom woman sang out whoops it was a wow of a grub layout it was that but this dumb thing i calls husband say you grub stuffin varmint what's that in your hat a drumstick is it do you want his honor to think i don't cook nothin for you good night all i'm that full i'm almost a bustin as lady standish shook hands that worthy woman said john what you did for branton hills should go into our national library at washington in plain sight sally youth's part was paramount in all that work all i did was to boss and old doc wilkins coming out nibbling a bunch of raisins said uh-huh but a boss must know his job that's all right said gatsby but it was young hands and young minds that did my work don't disqualify youth for it'll fool you if you do a glorious full moon sails across a sky without a cloud a crisp night air has folks turning up coat collars and kids hopping up and down for warmth and that giant star sirius winking slyly knows that soon now that light up in his honor's room window will go out it is out so as sirius and luna hold an all-night vigil i'll say a soft good night to all our happy bunch and to john gatsby youth's champion fini note not a word containing the letter e has appeared in this story of over fifty thousand words end of section forty three recording by john brandon end of gatsby by ernest vincent wright